Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm an actuary, and for the people who do not know what an actuary is, I think that was the slide before that. This is what an actuary is. We don't all wear bow ties, but we are all stiff, you know. <laughs> we are not. Uh, but actuaries live on numbers. So technically speaking, the subject matter to today, data, this is what we do. We live on data. Uh, and if I go to the first slide, I talk about it and I thought this is the most appropriate way of looking at it because data could be dangerous. It's exactly like a, uh, what we see, an iceberg. It, what we can see is one thing and what we do not see is something else. And a small typical point I would like to mention, like in Africa in particular, we tried very hard, not us, I mean governments, but tried very hard to bring down infant mortality. And they were very, very proud that they reduced infant mortality. The numbers showed that it was reduced, but they didn't show the implication of having now children on the streets with no education, and all of a sudden we have other problems. So looking and benchmarking at certain indicators is not enough. It's not enough. So this is why when we look at any kind of any kind of risk at any kind of number, we have to go beyond that, reading that number. And I like to use a very famous, uh, uh, I think a Scotsman that said that numbers should be, uh, where is that? Yeah. Uh, numbers should really be used in the proper way, not like how a drunk man use a lamppost to support from falling after being drunk, but rather for the light it sheds. Uh, many governments, many officials don't like to use numbers or when they use it, they abuse it. And in Africa in particular, they think numbers are secretive because technically speaking, when you leave the peop uh, people in the dark, then you can dictate anything they want to tell them, this is what we are doing for you, but who's you? The profiling, I was telling uh, my colleagues on the panel that I'm an actuary and in particularly I involved in reform of social security and social protection and national health care in, in this region. I tend to know more about these governments or these countries than they know themselves. Why? Because we go out of our way to collect data from this organization, from that organization, from this employer, that employer, and then we put them together and we try to make to make sense out of the data we get. A small example about secrecy in data. A uh, few years ago, one of the countries wanted to insure, since talking about insurance, wanted to insure its Navy. So they put a tender, an official tender, to insure the Navy. So one of the insurance company, local insurance companies, knew that we are an actuary, uh, an actuary firm. They thought, oh, an ideal person to lead us to the right direction is talking to Mohanna. So they spoke to us, can you put us in contact with the right syndicate in London that insure navies? So I investigated and then we gave them a the name of a syndicate, Lloyd's syndicate that insures navy. So to make a long story short, the tender was submitted and everything, and all of a sudden the intelligence, the secret service of that country called the CAO of the insurance company that submitted the tender for investigation. Why? Because in the tender, when he submitted, he submitted information that has never been released in that country. How did he get to know about that information? So the guy called me up from the cell, from the investigation room. Who are the people that you put me in touch with? They are put me in trouble. So I called the people in England and to make to come to the end of the story, the guy in England started laughing. He said, the information is on the internet. And the people in that country, they think it's secretive. You know, So data is there, but it's a matter of how you can get that data and how to use it. Uh, I believe uh, we are gonna make our presentation short. I did have a longer, there are many slides on my presentation, but I think we can make it available for you uh, for whoever is interested, uh, so we don't bore you, or we can come back to it as we go along if somebody asks us. In particular, we are interested in demographics, 
in economics. So a country is not a country without the people living in it. So we have to know the profile of these people. Uh, urbanization is a big issue in these countries. People moving into the cities and without really knowing how to absorb, the city does not absorb them. And I'd like to give you the last example in my initial presentation is uh, Medellin. I don't know if anybody knows Medellin or heard of Medellin. Medellin was known to be the capital of drugs in the world, the drug capital of the world. Uh, and then the mayor of Medellin decided to transform that city into a different city. Started by looking at, let's profile the people that live in that city and the people that commit these crimes. And they found out that most people that are involved in drugs are people that come from the villages to make a decent living. But they come from these villages to a big city. They are earning very little and what they are earning is not enough to make, the, to make a living. So they are living on the streets. So the warlords and the drug lords and everything are recruiting these people to make them a little bit more money. So the mayor decided, okay, since these are initially good people and their in interest is only to make money to go back to their villages, but they can't afford to go back and forth, they created a public system whereby everybody will buy a ticket on a train to come to Medellin to work and that ticket is rebated if they go back the same day to their village. So come work, earn your money, but since you cannot afford to live and this way you are on the street, we will even pay you, rebate you back your train ticket if you go back the same day. So all of a sudden the streets are empty at night. People are not anymore drug peddlers. There's no more trouble uh, in the streets. So this is what we call about understanding profiling people. And this is what we can move forward by understanding the people we live with. So, please, it's yours. 